there are a lot of contradictions in Maharashtra. We are the richest, one of the richest uh, states in the country with uh, uh, highest contributions to the national GDP. But around 70 percent of the state's villages, what is not either not available, or they don't get it through taps, or um, it's not available 15 meters below the ground. Uh, around 80 percent population is still dependent on agriculture in some parts, out of which around 38 percent are landless laborers. It's a very interesting part when it comes to water rights. Then this this emerges as an important fact. Uh, we are also the first state to have the Water Regulation Authority Act, which was passed in 2005, and it was a part of the Maharashtra Water Sector Improvement Project, which was basically World Bank funded. And it was one of it was I mean it was as blatant as a condition that you need to have the MWRRA Act in place before the funding for the uh, uh, Water Sector Improvement Project comes in. Around 83% of that project is funded by the World Bank. Uh, well, uh, the act was formed, the act was passed, the authority has been put in place. Uh, one of the only things that the authority has done so far is uh, um, the act itself has been amended. And it has been amended in a very uh, significant and a very interesting way. And uh, one of the only things that has been achieved through this amendment is that the clause 10C of the MWRRA Act, which says that uh, the water entitlements will be distributed in an equitable fashion, has been actually taken out. And this was through a very interesting uh, thing which happened in the cabinet. It was passed and the governor actually signed this in one day, which generally the decision making takes around a week. It was done in one day and this was basically done before this water entitlements, around 1500 million cubic meter of water was the entitlements were changed from irrigation to industries and cities. And there was a big hullabaloo about this. And uh, before the, the high court could take its decision on this subject, the amendment came in place. So then uh, the 1,500 million cubic meters was uh, sort of formalized. And after that, because this amendment is in place and because now the cabinet has the last word about water entitlements and not the MWRRA, which was what it was envisioned first, that the MWRRA would have, and it will work in an equitable uh, basis, stuff like that, the people which, mm, uh, some people were doubtful about that too. Um, um, so that didn't happen either, and uh, now the water entitlements, uh, the last say is with the cabinet, and the cabinet had actually changed the water entitlements uh, for dams in Vidarbha. Okay, I can do it right now. So that's okay. Uh, uh, so so let's let's come back to the broader or the shorter picture. And I'll be talking about four rivers in, in Maharashtra. This is the small Vashishti River. Then is the Shastri. These are all rivers in Western Ghats. This is the Mula Mutha River, Mula and Mutha, which join to form Bhima. And this is the Ujni Reservoir, which forms a part of the upper Krishna Basin, and then eventually the Krishna Basin. And uh, this is a very tiny river called the Kathani. It's a, it's a river in Vidarbha region, a very interesting river. The entire uh, rivers in Vidarbha itself are, have very unique characteristics, quite different than what uh, the other rivers in Maharashtra have. They're also very little studied, and uh, they have some very interesting cultural and social aspects uh, to them. It, uh, Kathani joins Vaina Ganga, uh, and which eventually joins the Godavari Basin. So um, uh, this is about the west flowing rivers in Maharashtra. Uh, as I said, there are, imp there are 11 important west flowing rivers. I don't know what this, this is, uh, this important figure, I got it from the Central Groundwater Board. I don't know what this important thing actually means because it uh, has no bearing also on the length of the river or their average annual yield. But uh, the sort of bigger rivers in Maharashtra are the Damanaganga, the Surya, Vaitarana. I'm going from north to south. Vaitarana, Ullah, Savitri, Kundalika, Patalaganga, Vashishti, Shastri, Karli and Terekhol. Terekhol is also shared with Goa. Parts of it, uh, of the watershed fall in Goa. And there are numerous smaller creeks, smaller rivers which join the creeks uh, directly. Uh, a very interesting part of these western, uh, west flowing rivers is that they get a lot of water from the east flowing rivers, which have been transferred to the west for hydroelectric power generation. Uh, we are, we are uh, right now shifting around 131 uh, TMC of water, out of which 67.5 has been uh, with Koina, and this, this has been happening for the past 35 years. And then uh, around 51 TMC of this interbasin transfer happens uh, through the Tata dams, a series of six dams, 
to generate water to generate power only for Mumbai, and it generates about 450 megawatts of power. So this is a sort of interbasin transfer, and this water flows uh, it goes to the west flowing rivers, uh, where the basin sizes and the valleys are very small. So it's very interesting to see how these rivers actually accommodate this water. It's also a high rainfall zone. It's around uh, 4,500 millimeters rainfall. So there are also flash floods in rainy season, plus this water coming in. Koina is now, uh, the Koina stage 4 is a peaking power reservoir. So it's very interesting to see what happens with such huge amounts of waterfall in a smaller basin. Uh, uh, when I said there were no, no dams planned, nothing can stop human uh, ingenuity. And there are around eight dams, eight large dams, which have been planned for water supply only of Mumbai and the Mumbai metropolitan region. Um, some of them are um, the middle Vaitarana, which is around 70% complete now. The Balaganga, which is also 70% complete without any forest clearance. Till date, there has been no forest clearance given to Balaganga. And the works have been 70% complete. The only channel, they have not actually embanked the, uh, you know, stopped the flow. But they still don't have the forest clearance. Then the Shai, Gargai, Pinzer, and uh, the Kalu. These are all rivers which are either Vaitarana or the Ullas Basin. Um, they, uh, these, these dams will displace more than 25,000 tribals and, and submerge around uh, 14,000 hectares of tribal land. And also 5,600 hectares of forest in Western Ghat region. I'm sure Panduji will talk about it, but Western Ghat is one of the 21 biodiversity hotspots in the world with very high plant diversity. And the recent report is that we have also uh, the highest freshwater fish and freshwater diversity, uh, one of the highest freshwater diversity indices in the whole world. So, mm, and due to some very serious omissions in the EIA 2006 notification, uh, these dams, which are water supply dams, which are not entirely water supply dams, these will be supplying water also to the SCZs and the industries, and it's clearly stated. It's not as if it's a hidden information. Uh, they do not need an EIA. They are exempt from EIA, and uh, or they are exempt from environment clearance. And when you say ex exempt from environment clearance, they don't need an EIA, they don't need a public hearing, or um, uh, no EMPs either. We've been, uh, Sandrip has been writing about this uh, to the MOEF, but uh, there's been no response till now. Uh, this, is, this is what is going on on the Kalu Dam, which, um, um, this is Vaitarna. This is, this is the Kalu Dam, where actually the uh, excavation, the foundation excavation has uh, actually, I mean, now it's, it's, the work has stopped, but this, this has happened without any forest clearance. It's completely illegal. Uh, this is Kalu Dam. This is Vaitarna Gorge. It's, it's a wonderful gorge around, uh, it's around 50 to 50 meters deep and very narrow, and this will be completely flooded by the middle Vaitarna Dam. Uh, around 700 hectares of forest along this gorge will also be submerged. This is the Middle Vaitarana, uh, these are the tribals from Middle Vaitarana. Middle Vaitarana Dam or the uh, uh, dam uh, project has made no temporary uh, uh, prov provision for water for the tribals right now. Let's see what the situation goes later. So these are some of the statistics of the dams which are planned for of the west flowing rivers. And, and all of the, these are for supplying water to Mumbai. And one of them, the last dam, is Barvi Dam. Barvi is an extremely interesting study. Barvi, the height of Barvi Dam has been increased four times. And uh, people have been displaced four times with every height increase. And it does not require any forest clearance uh, or any EIA. And people have been shifting four times. So, so um, well, the other rivers in Western Ghats, are not dammed. And as I said, uh, 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 people have been lamenting that these can't be dammed and it's such a waste, 44% uh, of the water is going stuff. But we are using them. And what will happen if we dam them? Uh, so how, do, how are we using them? Patalganga, Kundalika, Savitri, Vashishti. All these rivers have huge chemical MIDCs on their banks. This is around 50 kilometers from the sea. It's not near the sea. They are not discharging the effluents in the sea. They are discharging the effluents in the creeks. On these creeks where a population of, in Vashishti, there's a population of around 8,000 fishermen, which depend on the creek for their livelihoods. And, um, well, when these MIDCs were planned, when I read uh, the MIDC report for uh, Lote Parshuram MIDC, which is on Vashishti River, which was planned in, uh, in the 1980s, 
one of the uh, justification they say that this was done for a balanced uh, growth of the population in Konkan, economical stability of population in Konkan. So let's see what these, this has done to the population in Konkan. Uh, but uh, on an average, all of these rivers have been, have the common effluent treatment plants on them, and all of these rivers have been um, discharging their chemical effluents into the creeks and having extremely uh, damaging results on the creeks. Uh, fish kills are a common sight, and Patal uh, Ganga, Savitri, and Vashishti, the creeks are now abandoned. There is no fishing business here. There is only sand mining which goes on here because there are no fish in these rivers. And uh, fish kills have now, you know, started to reduce because there are no fish for fish kills. So, uh, and it's very blatant. Any field visit and uh, any day you go there and you can see some pipe which is broken and some effluent which is flowing directly uh, into these rivers. Let us start with our first river, which is the river Vashishti. Um, Vashishti gets, uh, uh, Vashishti gets its uh, extra water from the Koena hydroelectric project. This has been happening for the last 35 years. Uh, it gets around uh, 1900 million cubic meters from Koena. Uh, area under agriculture and horticulture is 67,000 hectares. And uh, the area of the basin is around uh, 2,230 square kilometers. Koena uh, hydroelectric project, as I said, it changed the character of the river. and. Uh, it has been documented that there, there are no fish in Vashishti Creek anymore. Uh, and the locals have been uh, talking about this and they have been saying that the major reasons for the fish decline and the fish uh, disappearance has been the Lote Parshuram MIDC, which is on the banks of... This is the Lote Parshuram MIDC. Here. Just at the confluence of two rivers. Vashishti and Jagbudi. Just at the confluence is the MIDC. And then the river flows on for around 55 kilometers till it meets the sea. And there are around 80 fishing villages on this, in this uh, stretch of 55 kilometers. Uh, so one of the, one of the uh, components is definitely the Lote Parsharam chemical MIDC, and we'll come, come to the water quality parts later. But these very high level fluctu uh, fluctuations because of the Kohena Dam, now that it is a peaking power reservoir, is also having a very serious impact on the fish and the mangroves and the fish eggs of the region. And this is, a, uh, this is an aspect which has not been studied at all. We talked with a lot of fisheries experts and we talked about their opinion of what will happen if there is a flushing flow coming every day. And it is said that the spawning habits of the fish and the crustaceans, which form an important part of the food cycle of the fish, they are destroyed because the fish are um, uh, spawners and they get their spawning cues from the floods. And if you have a system which is starving and flooding at the same day, in the morning and in the evening, then it's, complete, it's, it's, it's very difficult for the fish to have their own biological cycle. So that is one aspect of fish production which has to be looked into, which has not been touched, but... Uh, but also, I mean, there are some very severe other problems which makes the problem of Koena sort of, you know, fade out of our attention. There's the Lote Parshara industrial area. Right now, there are around 122 units which have been um, uh, producing pesticides, insecticides, organochlorines, uh, plastics, dioxines. And um, some of them were shut down. Some of them uh, were voluntary shut. Some of them were closed by MPCB. Some of them actually have four of the functioning units right now at Lote Parishan MIDC have been given closure order two months before this. And they're still not closed. They're still functioning. Everyone knows about it. So, uh, uh, so these efforts have been discharged for past 25 years now. And it's completely changed the ecology, sociology, and the economy of the region. There's not been much study of how Lote Parshuram has affected the economy, but there was a study in 1997. Okay, so now we see that this MIDC was planned here to provide better survival opportunities for the people of the region. Uh, during a 1997 study, it was said that out of the 700 people who actually asked for employment, around 92 people were given employment, and all that was on contractual basis. The situation right now is even worse, because there have been a lot of skirmishes between the uh, companies, the MIDC, and the local people. So now the companies are very wary of taking any local people in their companies. So there is very, there's hardly any representation of the local people in the MIDC, so much for uh, s better survival opportunities. We'll see what the health impacts of this are. So that will also have a bearing on the survival opportunities this uh, MIDC has created. Um, 
untreated pollutants have had a major impact and uh, the fishing industry is dead. There is no fishing industry now. It's not as if uh, it's decreasing, declining or anything. The fishing industry in the creek is dead. There is still some fishing in Dabhur. Dabhur is the creek of Vashishti. Dabhur is a place where Vashishti meets the sea. It's the mouth of the river. There is still some very little fishing which goes on at Dabhur. I talked with one of the fisheries cooperatives from Dabhur. Uh, which fishes in the uh, estuary and not the open sea. They said that they used to get, till around 15 years back, they used to get 10 kg of fish for every net that they cast. They used to cast two or three such net, nets every day. And today, if they, uh, 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 you know, uh, they uh, do have this net for the entire day, they get half kg of fish from the creek. And uh, unfortunately, the thing is, you know, there are no scientific studies. There are no scientific socio-economical studies to uh, sort of, uh, you know, check or comment on what has been hap what has happened on Vashishti and the fishermen of Vashishti. But anyway, uh, it has been estimated that around, uh, this has been estimated by the uh, colleges in Chipulun, which is also one of the towns on Shastri, that around 70% of the estuarine fish and the aquatic species which were found in the creek are now locally extinct, are now not found. For example, shrimps and crustaceans, shrimps which form a very important part of the fish diet are completely wiped out because shrimps uh, are very, very sensitive to water pollution. So they are completely wiped out of the region. So there's major change in the composition of fish of that region. 